Dr. Don here of the Wizard of Art. Welcome to Start Art. We're glad to be back in Oakland in the San Francisco Bay Area. Today we have a renowned artist that lives in our community, Mr. Kyle Fortune. He's an art educator and also he does fantastic works of art. Stay tuned and you'll be motivated, inspired, and you'll want to be just like him. Dr. Don. Dr. Don here, the Wizard of Art. Welcome to Start Art, Oakland, San Francisco Bay Area. There's a lot going on in the cultural scene here and nonprofit art in the community. I, at Start Art TV series, I'm the one right now, but in the future, you know, I have a lot of hope, a lot of faith that this will blossom into something that'll make us all very happy. Have a very special guest with me today, Mr. Kaya Fortune, artist, extraordinaire, educator, loves to work with children, free spirit, loves art that you wear that's called fashion. Fashion begins with the F word, and I do mean fashion, from his creativity. Welcome to Start Art. Welcome, Kaya. It's my pleasure to have you, brother. Thank you, Don. My, my pleasure. pleasure to be here. My man. pleasure. Thank you very I much. look for this day, and uh, I'm excited to hear what you have to say. Okay. You are an Afro-American artist. Correct. And, and what else? Help me out a little bit. Uh, a universal artist at the same time. Universal. Yes. Thank you. So I, I think that uh, all of us artists. Uh, we have something to do with our roots and where we come from, our traditional roots. True. Uh, but as learning about our traditional roots and who we are, we are universal people. Right. So before we make our journey to wherever we are presently, we have already been somewhere in the universe right. on the planet. Right. So I like to include uh, everybody because I think everybody has a connection to me universally. And that means also uh, traveling around. As we travel, we pick up like, uh, we'll say for instance, my black jacket, wherever I go, that there's a lint of another color, whether it's white, blue, or red, I pick up. So we all absorb each other on the planet. That's great. I like that philosophy. Uh, where are you from? Uh, I'm originally from, uh, I was born in Oakland, California, but I was raised in Compton, California. And you're how old? Yeah, I am 59. 59? Good God. If I was 59, <laughs> I would be emperor of the next three galaxies, all right? I think that's beautiful. That's good. Yeah, that's 59 good. years old, yeah. You don't look it. And uh, I've seen your work, and I haven't said too much about it, but I've seen it and I've watched it. And I've had other people ask me, what do you think of Kyra's work? What do you think of Kyra's work? And I say, what do you think of it? I say, we have different mind's eye. What exactly. I see, you can't see because you haven't perfected your sight to my level. Did mm -hmm. I tell them right? <laughs> <laughs> you tell me what you see because you ask me, right, you're exactly. the one that's uh, disturbed or bothered or excited about it. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you see. So beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Of the beholder. For sure. So there, there are a lot, of, a lot of buzz out there about your work, whether you know it or not, you're an artist, okay, because you're coming from where you are and you're expressing yourself. Okay, um, school. Um, I started school uh, in, in primarily in South Central, I went to elementary school there. Uh, later South on Central, L.A. 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 South LA. Central, L.A. And I later went to school, uh, um, went to L.A. I graduated from L.A. High, high school in 1973. Mm -hmm. uh, my whole excitement about going to school at that time was we had some art teachers at the school who were really influential. Uh, one uh, teacher that we had who was an art teacher, she was like a, uh, played piano for Duke Ellington and she was, rich, uh, rich. yeah, really a, a good friend of really Langston rich. Hughes. Oh, so she turned oh. us on to all those particular people. And so she was a great influence of us being conscious about ourselves. Not only being conscious about the world, but being conscious That's about ourselves. Yeah. I think once you're conscious about yourself, then you're more open to being conscious about the world. Right. And, and if I might interject here, mm -hmm. a lot of us black artists, 
I don't care what the age. I'm almost 200. Right. <laughs> Believe it. I'm almost there. Yeah. Once you get past 50, you're almost yeah, 200. Yeah, exactly. Okay. True enough. I'm almost 200. And I am not afraid to be my own self and my own artist and move by what I see, whether people say, mm, I don't know about that. Uh, what you been smoking? You, you know, <laughs> yeah. you, you see what I'm saying? And I, and right. I got that a lot. Right. And I, I was a person that hid my work, right. especially from my parents right. and my dad. I, I hid my work. I, was just, I wasn't sure about it. But being exposed to artists like you, Arthur Monroe, uh, the, art, the art in uh, Lucas's movies and mm -hmm. others, Picasso, and I said, ah, there's nothing wrong with me. So that emerging artist came out, and, and I've noticed your work, how, how you've changed, you involved in what I like about it, that uh, I might be stealing all your words here, mm -hmm. but you educate children in art. What's that like? Well, you know, I've been teaching art in uh, the city of Oakland for about like almost 30 years now. 30 years? Almost 30 years. Where at? Uh, so I teach at a couple of places. Uh, right now I'm at St. Teresa right. in Oakland, right. in Oakland Hills. And then I'm over at uh, Cleveland Elementary School. Right, absolutely. And so I've been those two places for at least uh, about seven years piece. And my whole thing about teaching children is trying to help them to create their creative voice. Right. When you have a child and give them the opportunity to have a creative voice, I tell kids all the time, you may have to go alone. Speak, Lord. You may have to go alone. Yes. But if you have that self-confidence yes. and that interest, you, you know go. what I mean, there in exploring, go. is you okay to go along? That's it. When I was a kid, I had to go along. That's it. Uh, my dad was saying on Saturday morning, uh, his friend says, where's Kai going? He's not going to help us uh, change the oil? He yeah. said, no, nah, he's not in to change the oil. He's right. going to the art museum. Right. That's, That's not his thing. Absolutely. <laughs> he yeah. don't want no oil real hard. There you go. Thing. And today, it's not just drugs alcohol and sex mm -hmm. that's ruining the youth of this generation, it's the lack of self-expression. That's what's wrong. And, and, and I noticed this because yeah. I've been teaching art for 46 years, Russia, right. China, Japan, right. Santa Rosa, uh, Paris, uh, Oakland, San Francisco. I noticed all the kids with the bad behavior, well, ooh, 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 they, yes, they couldn't, yes, yes, they couldn't yes, do English, yes, they couldn't do math, yeah, they couldn't yeah. do this, and that. but put them in the art class and push that pause button and put some color, pencils, paint, scissors, paper for them, and they just, hmm, right, purred correct, like a correct. kitten. And, and, and I was asked, what have you done to him? He can't stay in any class. I said, maybe you should ask him. Exactly. Oh, Mr. Green knows what I want to do. I said, no, Mr. Green knows what you should do, okay? Mm -hmm. You need that inner man or that, that, that emerging artist to come out yeah. to satisfy you. And, and, and I appreciate that about you all the years that, that we've talked mm -hmm. about your teaching. I said, God, is this guy painting more than he's teaching? Or is he teaching more than he's painting? Or is he simultaneously doing that? We're all born with that creativity spark and it's got to be massaged by teachers like Kaya Fortune and yours truly. Tell me, tell me about color. What do you think about color? You use color a lot? or uh, I use color like... in everything that I do. Why? Uh, Why? Is it, well, is it necessary? There's a couple of things. Uh, for me it's necessary. Yes. Uh, why it's necessary is because it is the foundation of life. So the foundation of life is color. Yes. Um, and so... Uh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Foundation of light, what are you talking about? The green trees, the green grass, the ultraviolet blue sky, the flowers. The it, flowers, it, the trees, everything that we have are organically yes. that we can experience comes yes. from color. Comes from color. Uh, and we as human beings define all that from Mother Nature. You're right. And that's a simple thing that really, even if you have an art class, basically, a lot of times kids don't even get a chance to experience that part. It's like you want to get a color palette or go outside yes. and define your color palette. Right. We can mix colors all day here. Right. We can do that. That's pretty easy. That's pretty rote. It's pretty, you know, uh, easy to do. But we need to go outside and understand where those colors evolve from. So you'll see uh, maybe a... You're talking about the environment. Right. The environment 
that we were born in, that we live in, that we go to work in, that we go to school in, on a daily basis, right. in the midday and evening, watching the moon appear before the sun is off the scene, looking at the horizon of right, the blues right. and the purples and the oranges, it well, affects us. Yes, but at the same time, I think in schools and, 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 and society in general, right. they don't talk about the, the dialectic. No. Nobody talks about it. It's the old term they use in the 70s and the 80s when people were talking about uh, different types of ism, socialism, communism, et cetera, et cetera. Right, right. But dialectical materialism is the transformation of things. Right, right. And kids don't get a chance to find a transformation of things. And if you don't ever get a chance to understand transformation, you never get a chance to investigate. Correct. Another question here, if I might interject. What was your motivation to paint? Uh, my mom. My mom was an artist. Your mom. Yeah, my mom was an artist. Monroe said, yeah. Arthur Monroe mentioned his grandmother. Mm -hmm. It was my grandmother oh, also. Wow. Oh, wow. Thank God for grandmothers mothers and mothers and mom, out there. Exactly. Dads, we're going to get to you today, too. But <laughs> thank God for grandmas and mamas. Right. All right. Yeah. That's wonderful. Uh, uh, just briefly tell us how she inspired you. Well, my mom was an uh, art teacher. And uh, we had to always go with her to art classes. So eventually we had to sit down and do art. Eventually you kind of got into it a little bit. And my mother was really into, uh, she was ceramicist actually first. Great, great. So she did a lot of ceramics. And so we really got into clay and that whole medium. Oh. And it was just finding uh, your sort of place in the world in that. And it was, a, it was something that you could do and you didn't have to involve anybody else, and you can involve your own internal spirit. So you're saying it was develop a, that. It was an association mm -hmm. with. Uh, if you want to be rich, take it from Dr. Don. I know <laughs> this. I didn't say I was rich. I said if you want to be rich, then you must hang with those that are interested in wealth. If you want to yep. be a dancer, you got to hang with the dancers. If you want to be a singer, you got to hang around the group that sing. If you want to be in the movies, you got to get with the folks that got the agents and that can hook you up and put you in. If you want that emerging artist to come out, whether you're 10, 12, 14, 90 years old, look, look at, uh, uh, um, I can't think of her name. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe it'll come to me. Uh, uh, singer? O'Keefe. Okay. What, what, what was Georgia O'Keefe. Georgia O'Keefe. Look at her. Wrinkles and folds and dragging. But she was there in the desert at that age. Grandma Moses. I, I mean, when I first saw Grandma Moses, what the heck is this? Go try the price of Grandma Moses. <laughs> right now, yeah. <laughs> Wherever you are, you start. You see? Yeah. And, and it's an association. Our museum in Oakland. Our De Young in San Francisco, the Los Angeles Museum, the Berkeley Museum, KQED, all of the art features they bring, and, and free, all it takes is energy, and getting up off of your seat, going to the art festivals in Oakland and Berkeley, and you'll see Kaya, you'll see me, you'll see Arthur Monroe, and other artists that exhibit and hang in galleries in Europe. Uh, a gentleman that's not here that I, I tried to meet with, Raymond Saunders, right. you name it, Raymond Holbert, there is art here. We can't live without it. In brief, watching a health program on KQED, and they were showing what makes the human being healthy. Do you know creativity was one of them? Not mm -hmm. just water, not just the right kind of food, mm -hmm. but that creative thing that we had. What do you see the future of art in Oakland? What do you see it happening for, uh, in, in brief, the, the Afro-American artists, okay. uh, the Asian artists, the white artists, the European artists, the child artists, uh, the, the Sunday painter? Where do you see art going in Oakland? Uh, well, you know, I, I'm an optimist. Well, and, and always have optus, been. Optus. And so uh, I see the direction, and uh, a lot of artists have been coming to Oakland in the last, I've been here the last 30 years here in Oakland, so in the last maybe five to 10 years, a lot of artists have been coming here in Oakland. Of course, because of San Francisco is too expensive, so right, of course they have right. to make it over the bridge to, uh, to Oakland, and that's been a really, uh, uh, I think, positive thing for me. Okay. Uh, my thing about any artist, anybody who comes into any community, you have to take ownership of that. 
take ownership. You know what I mean? When you come to a community, you take ownership. You right. take ownership and respect of that community. Right. If you come to that community and it's just, uh, we sometimes use the word culture vulture, if you're coming for that reason and just to take and not give anything right. back, that's a different thing. Right. So now, I'm not respecting that. But if you are here to make, uh, to come to the city yes. of Oakland and to make this a richer place for everybody you and make what? this a stronger community, then yeah, I'm all for that. You have to give. Yes. yes. Oh, I need to be paid? I need to be paid? No, you don't. As an artist, no, you don't. Get out and volunteer. Get involved. Whatever sparked you, mm -hmm. go out and spark someone else. Look at the lightning strikes in the forests. All it takes is one spark, and that one spark will light, and then what's lit will light another. Next thing you know, you have a wildfire that can't put out for two or three weeks. Uh, what about art school, college? Is that necessary? Did you go? Uh, did you receive a scholarship? Uh, elaborate on that a little if you can. A, a couple of things. Uh, I was inspired by, um, I used to go to Watts Towers Art Center. And right. Brother John so, Otterbridge sort of inspired me and a lot of other artists, uh, friends of mine. And uh, he got us into going to Otis Art Institute. Yes. Uh, I snuck in classes with uh, Charles White. Right. Along with Kerry James Marshall and a lot of us right. who didn't have money to go to art school at that particular time. We were yes. a little younger, but we knew about Charles White. And so we used to sneak Very in, heavy. a lot of us Very sneak heavy. in to his classes. He would let us go in. As long as you're quiet, it's good to go. Right. Um, and later on, what we, I did is um, I went to uh, the Fashion Institute downtown LA. I went there. And then also I went to Otis Art Institute. And I graduated with a fine arts degree at UCLA. Wonderful. So those are my influences, and I got a lot of help along the way. I didn't have very much money, so I want to give thanks to all those people who are, wherever they are, who helped and supported me. Um, uh, director of the Flower Museum at UCLA, right. Dr. Rubin, who's no longer uh, on the planet. He, he transitioned, but he helped me a lot to really see my way and see that I could make it. Uh, and no matter else was going on, he was going to help and support me in that, in that effort. And what I have to say about that, cool, okay? That's an old word, mm -hmm. okay? That means okay. But you are giving thanks by being here because mm -hmm. of your achievements. Exactly. Well, Don, you know, you know me and you, we always see each other in the city. Right. Uh, I've been interested in fashion for a very long time, uh, basically because I was really influenced by jazz musicians and right. how impeccably dressed they were. Duke Ellington was some of my favorites. Bionius Monk was some of my favorites. All these guys who were impeccably dressed, so that right. influenced me. Um, I can tell. I went to uh, fit them, and I went there to be a designer. There was not a lot of African-American designers there at all. And the lady said, oh, you just be a buyer. You mm -hmm. can't be a designer. You be a buyer. I said, look, I'm going to do my own thing. So I went to get as much information as I possibly could. And then later on, uh, I came to San Francisco. And that's, I came to San Francisco about 1983. And I created my own line called Afro Blue Design. Afro Blue, Blue Design. B-L-U? Yes. And that was after John Coltrane's tune, right. uh, Afro Blue. I so see. I got that idea, and I wanted to incorporate us as a people into that label. So that's why I use I love jazz. I love John Coltrane. So I created a label called Afro Blue, and that label defined um, a sort of um, classes from the 30s and 40s with a sort of contemporary feel to them. Oh, go. Cool. And I had a couple of stores at the time. I had Macy's, I had a little piece of Macy's. I had a, a Mitier, a couple of a Maiden Lane in San Francisco. Right. I had a four or five boutiques in San Francisco and a couple in LA. So that for me was really defining that you can do it yourself. You can do it. That you can really motivate something inside yourself. Right. Go out and talk to people and people will support you. If you really they really believe in what you're saying. And then the second thing I tell people all the time is you have to deliver. What's going to happen when you deliver? You've got to really make sure whatever you do is impeccable, is as good as Calvin Klein, is as good as Giorgio Armani. Oh, yeah. So my standards were high standards, keeping high standards, to making sure that I was on that particular level. I and you. so I actually surprised myself by having orders and being pretty independent for five, five, four or five years. I traveled to Italy, uh, London, Rome, all over the world, and did and was able to be sustainable without working. And that's the first experience I ever had of being sustainable without working. And I said, well, well I can really do that. Yes, and can. have fun and enjoy the world at the same right. time. Right. Um, and so that sort of fashion thing influenced the way sort of how I look at art. And you ask a question about artists uh, teaching, not only teaching, but doing art. A lot of artists I know, they only teach and they stop doing art. I wanted to actually do both. 
it's necessary for me to be an artist and teach. Yes. If I can't be an artist and teach, I can't influence. Right. I can't be creative. I hear you know what I mean? I get stagnated. You know what I mean? Right. So I say to my kids that, you know, this is what I'm doing in the class. Let's try this. So I want to make sure I incorporate that. And what that does is it, it sort of elevates your own style. And what I'm doing now in my work now, um, I was really influenced by, I was looking like everybody else, looking at all the classics, trying to copy the classics. And then one time I said to myself, your family is a classic. Right. Your family can be the subject. That's everybody it. else had a subject of their environment and where they were. That's it. So my work now talks about uh, the Santeria, you know what I mean? Uh, the religion that comes from Africa, that comes from Cuba, the South America, Absolutely. the Absolutely. evolution of who we are as a people, yes. you know what I mean? So my work talks about that, and in that work, I influence and incorporate uh, my family into that work. Also, Absolutely. the contemporary things that are going on. Right. Right. I have a piece now that I'm working on uh, that I brought uh, about two women who are uh, Obatala, part of the Obatala spirit, yes. Yes. and they're being baptized. The baptism, we all go through baptism and transformation. Yes. So my parents who have passed away, I want to bring them, keep them alive in the sense of a visual narrative and story. So my work is about a visual narrative and story of keeping our parents and keeping our existence alive. And as long as we keep them alive in memory and thought and, and spirit, right. they'll always be living. That's so right. like Bob Marty says, ever living and everlasting, ever we need to really teach that more in schools. That's it. We don't teach that. We don't teach the word transition. This is a death and dying society. Yes. That's why it's death and it's dying. That's it. We need to say transition. Transition. That we transition from one place to, to another. another. And we evolve as spirits and as human beings. Right. And so in my classes, I also try to incorporate that. And I always take my artwork when I'm doing a piece. I take it to the class, show it to the kids, Maybe. kindergartners, first graders. Yes. Say, so what do you think about that? Give me yes. some reflections on yes. that. So I think that's important to do. The most honest criticism you can get is from the children. <laughs> Ask the dog, okay? <laughs> that is wonderful. All I can say is, cool. <laughs> I'm inspired. I'm in mo motivated. I'm excited with you. Yeah. I, it would have been a mistake not to have you here. Well, thanks. I'm great to great for you having me. We'll have you back. And I appreciate that, man. All right, bless. Morning, morning. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Kaya Fortune. Um, I've been an artist in the Bay Area for the last uh, 30 years. Um, I consider myself an artist activist. Uh, I'm a teacher and educator in the Bay Area. Um, but my main sort of inspiration has always been uh, uh, music. Music has always been a primary inspiration for me. Um, and also uh, the creative arts. So I've been inspired by everything. So art, music, dance, theater, interior design, all that's sort of an important element for me to be able to work and do the kind of work I'm doing. Well, you know what? Some of the tools are a little bit of everything. So I've got brushes here. I've got, you notice I work sort of randomly. I work sporadically. I don't really work. I'm not really an orderly person. I don't like to work like that. I like to feel different things going on. So here's some paints. Here's some brushes, soap and water. Um, we got some mixed media stuff down here that's going to be a future piece, ping pong paddles, which is going to be a future piece um, about um, the sort of tentacles of our lives and people connected to that. So I'm going to work on that. Um, I've got this piece right here, and I haven't finished it, but it's in work in progress. I've got a lot of work in progress. So this is a commemoration and respect for all the lives lost in East Oakland. So I haven't actually finished it yet, but I wanted to, in reference to the gun itself, the spirit of the Santeria, the Ogun. So we have metal bottle caps, and then we have the nails. And so we're going to talk about what I'm going to sort of incorporate what the nails mean in reference to the religion and our spiritual connection, you know, to those who have passed away in our lives, in our communities also. I have uh, some paintings here. And this is, uh, I do a lot of stuff around the uh, Santeria, a lot of the spirits. So this is Gay D. He's actually the um, protector of the underworld and the under spirits. So <clears throat> I actually have him as the image. And then I have all the sort of images in people around us, you know what I mean? The tricksters, the honest people, the people that are not so honest, the people, you know, who love us, the people who sometimes love us, you know? We have all those sort of characters in our lives. So I wanted to represent that in this piece right here. Um, this is another uh, pencil piece I did over here. Um, represented by a couple artists that have passed away. 
um, at the time, and so sometimes I did some things, commemorations of, you know, artists who had passed away, so I wanted to kind of give a story around that. This is the Ibeji, okay, the Ibeji Spirits. So this is my spray paint series. This is when I was actually uh, using spray paint. Uh, I, have, I work with a lot of kids in the community, do a lot of graffiti stuff, and the idea was is that they do graffiti, but they didn't really have a concept about color. And they didn't have a concept, color concept, and they didn't know how to blend colors. So they knew how to use spray paint can, but they couldn't paint it. It was difficult for them to be able to use that color palette. So I wanted to show them, they showed me how to spray paint, and I wanted to show them how to paint. And so this is what I cut. This is my interpretation of them showing me how to spray paint and taking textures and patterns and silhouettes and working the spray paint motion of it. And so there's a great exchange that comes through my teaching other children is that you always should have, for me, an exchange. It's very important to have this exchange. So we both grow at the same time. And if we both if we grow at the same time, we're pretty much happy when we see each other again. <laughs> So that's one of those pieces here, and this is another piece inspired the same spray paint series, and this is about the patrons, the people uh, you know who worship the spirits, and she is in the you know, gate. And so this is simply a security gate that we all have in our houses. We all have the security gate stuff. We already have that, but the security gate is very significant in the, in the Santeria religion. It has a meaning. So we have the security gate. Remember, you know, this waffle. This waffle with a security gate means beauty in the religion. But we have it, it's just, in America, we have it all the time. It's just a utilitarian, simple, easy. But all this has a meaning. And this has a bebe meaning, too. So this has a meaning. This symbol right here has talked about our unity in our community, unity amongst ourselves. So you have this symmetrical pattern. So symmetry means balance. It means, you know what I mean, <clears throat> harmony, unity. So that's why I incorporate that behind her. You know what I mean? Once again, the metal. Ogun, once again. And this is the Shango spirit I put over here. Um, the bottles of the spirits down at the bottom. And the guardian gate that I used. And a lot of it's painted. A lot of it's painted. A lot of it's used uh, stencils. I love stencils. And I love the patterns. So uh, artists like John Biggers is why it would be my primary inspiration for pieces like this. John Biggers. Uh, uh, Charles White is an inspiration. Uh, and John Out of Bridge, artists like that have been it really it been inspirational for me to do everything I'm doing. And we, they, they told me, taught me how important it was to keep the legacy going. We have a legacy to keep going. If we realize it or not, we all have one. So I'm just trying to keep my legacy going in reference to the visual arts.